hey guys hello 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 it's been such a long time since i made a video um so much of my life has changed um starting off with the reason for this video we are doing a story time on my third labor and delivery i had another baby <laughs> isn't that so crazy you guys it's been such a long time so much of so much has changed um but you know we're here we're doing our thing and this by far is like my favorite labor and delivery story by far and without further ado you guys we're just gonna get right into the video before we get into the video you guys i am having a snack um so consider this like a mukbang i have my um what is this I'm eating an Egg McMuffin. <laughs> I'm eating an Egg McMuffin with some avocado spread and eggs. And then in my drink here, I have a peach mango. Peach, what did I call it? Peach coconut mango beverage. Um, it's obviously Herbalife Nutrition. And I think the best part about this is that it's not only just a drink, but it also has protein and i just worked out so you feel me this is what i'm talking about it has um 15 grams of protein and it's only 70 calories so um we're gonna be great so without further ado you guys let's get into this video and i am back you guys i tried the mukbang i'm not gonna lie it was not it so i ate my snack and now we're gonna get right into this video you guys so if I'm looking down, by the way, it's because my notes are down here, and that's why. So, originally, I was due May 4th, so um, we were so excited because, you know, May the 4th be with you, it was kind of exciting, and for us, we have, like, a thing so far where our birthdays are each consecutive month, right? So, um, starting with my son, his birthday is February 28th, and then... But March is my husband, March 7th. And then April is my daughter, April 21st. 21st. Yeah. And then um, we didn't have a May. And then June was my birthday. So because our baby was due May 4th, we were super excited. We wanted her on May 4th. So as you guys know, or maybe you don't know, but around 36, 37 weeks, 35, 36 weeks, they, you know, do the GBS test. And that's the groupie strep. And if you don't know what group B strep is, it's like a bacteria that is lives in your like vaginal canal. And if untreated, you know, it can cause serious damage to the baby's eyesight and health in the future. So they um, generally when you're positive, they want to give you like penicillin and all that before you have the baby. So unfortunately for me, I was positive this time. Uh, I wasn't positive with my son. And that's why we had him at home. And if you guys haven't seen that video, I'm going to link it here somewhere. somewhere. But it's a great video to watch. Or a labor and delivery story. So, um, yeah. So, I was groupie positive for my daughter. Both my daughters, actually. So, I was groupie positive And um, that just meant, you know, they wanted to do more of like a controlled... Um, controlled delivery you know because with my son i had him at home by accident so um they didn't want that to happen sorry so they didn't want that to happen again so with my daughter we set an induction date this time and the only date available was april 20 29th so of course we were a little bit bummed because of that but um also when they checked me I wasn't even nowhere near close like i was one centimeter maybe one and a half centimeters dilated so that was like good for us because it would take we we thought it would take like longer to have the baby right so we were like that's fine you know april 29 sucks that's not what we want but when we come in you know we'll just drag our feet we'll take our time or whatever as if we could control the situation right so you know, moving forward, it's April 29th. Um, you know, I'm super excited to have this baby out of me. Um, we're all excited to meet the baby. We want to meet her so bad. So April 29th, uh, my induction was set for 
five o'clock in the morning and we're thinking to ourselves like five o'clock in the morning like no way <laughs> no way we're going at nobody's five o'clock in the morning and also it was a saturday so saturdays our children have jujitsu and so jujitsu doesn't end until 12 o'clock so we're thinking we're just gonna go in at 12 o'clock like what what are they gonna tell us sorry you can't have your baby today come again tomorrow like so um they called us at around nine o'clock and they were like you know you missed your appointment and we were like what like our appointment was not till you know later or whatever we we pretended like we thought it was 5 p.m so um they called us at like nine o'clock and they were like you missed your appointment so we were like okay so what do we do like can we come in today should we come tomorrow because you know tomorrow is technically the day we want to come in so they were like yeah you could come in today um you know just come in around one because that's the time that we would have the appointments anyway so we're like okay we'll come in at one then that's perfect no problem so we came in at one and um you know they checked us in we did the whole process so we got into our room and the whole staff came to introduce themselves and so when they came you know they asked us like you know what's your birth plan what do you want how do you you know what do you what do you expect out of this so we were just like we had only three things no matter no matter what we want these three things and the first thing was for uh, my husband to deliver the baby um for uh oh to do um what's that thing called like delayed delayed cord clamp uh clamping or whatever like you know when you delay the cord cutting or whatever and the third thing was no epidural we don't want no epidural at all like don't even offer it and so they said you know every crew is different um most crews won't let you deliver the baby won't let the spouse deliver the baby but this crew does so we were like yep this is it we gotta have this baby today like forget the may 1st because we don't know you know we don't know if that's gonna be the same thing for tomorrow so you know they because of the groovy strep they started my penicillin and that's like a four hour process of like two um like two rounds or whatever and yeah so that's like a four hour process at this time it's like two o'clock so four hours would put us at six o'clock so they were like you know if you don't have this baby before six o'clock we can't we can't guarantee that he's going to be able to deliver the baby because the next crew comes in they're we're going to be doing turnover and the next crew might not let you do it so we were like well you know we'll see what happens when we get there so boom six o'clock on the dot comes and i finished my medicine and the next crew comes in and they're you know introducing themselves and they ask me the same thing you know what's your birth plan and you know what's your birth plan so we told them our birth plan was the same three things you know my husband to deliver the baby excuse me my husband to deliver the baby no epidural and delayed cord clamping right so they were like we can't we can't do that like we are not allowed to let anyone else assist in you know delivering the baby um just insert all the excuses here right so you know we're thinking like well the last crew was okay with it and you're telling me it's not it's not okay like it's not even allowed it's not even legal like my husband is a, a emt he's done this obviously three other times successfully before or two other times successfully before and on the job he's done it successfully like it's been plenty of times you know he has plenty of proof that he could do it successfully and they're like yeah no we would never my license blah 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 every other you know excuse so we were like okay um you know give us we need a minute like now we need to talk about this so they went out and um it was it's perfect y'all so i'm gonna i'm gonna like break it down for y'all right so they went out and out of the room um and you know how there's like the the doctor the nurse and then the people like under under them that help them or whatever so one of the people the like bottom like one of the bottom of the barrel people she's my friend or we work together and she was overhearing them say like you know they're allowed to leave if they want to and without receiving care today they're allowed to do that we're not going to tell them they're allowed to do that but 
they are allowed. So maybe they might do it. So we're not going to tell them just in case and let them, you know, figure it out. So she hears that. And then um, while we're in the room, we're calling other people because we know nurses too. Like there's people that we that work at the hospital that we are friends with too. So we're making phone calls and we're asking people like, you know, are we allowed to leave? Like they're telling us that they don't want to, like they can't do what we, what we want. Like they can't, they can't honor our breathing plan. It's nothing crazy. It's just regular stuff. So they're telling us they can't do it. So are we allowed to leave without receiving care? She's like, absolutely. You can, you just have to sign a paper and of course it's going to make them upset. They're not going to like it, but you're allowed as long as you didn't get any Pitocin, like to start, you know, put, putting you into labor and we hadn't yet. So it was like perfect timing. So, <clears throat> so then the girl comes in right after we just got off the phone, the girl comes in and tells us what they just said. And so now we're like, definitely we're out of here. Like my mom is in the room with us. It's me, my mom and my husband. Right. So my mom is in the room. The girl comes in and tells us that my mom is already packing up the room. Like she's, She's not playing, right? So she's already tracking. We're not doing it. So my mom's packing up the room. And then the doctors, the, the whole team comes back in, the whole crew. So they're like, yep. Uh, they brought Now they brought their, like, higher doctor, right? And so he comes and he's, you know, sits down. He's very like, we're not going to do this. I heard you wanted to do this. We're not doing it. So now we're looking at each other like, that's okay. Like, we're going we're gonna to go anyway, respectfully. Like, we respect everything that you guys... You know, we accept your professional medical opinion. Um, you know, we respect your license. We respect everything. And no offense, but, you know, we're just going to go because this is this is not what we want. Like, you know, this is what we wanted. And you can't give us this, so we're going to go. And then, um, you know, they're trying to convince us, you know, it's not safe, blah, 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 blah. Anything can happen, blah, 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 blah. This other, the other female comes and tells my husband, like, you know, I'm a doctor and I know what I'm doing. And, you know, my wife, if she was to, if she, when she was having our child, I wouldn't even, you know, if they told me that I can't help, I can't help because I'm a doctor, even though I'm a doctor. And we're like, man, like, goodbye. Like, we're packed. We're ready to go. We're done. Let's sign the paper we got to sign. And that's it. So we just felt like so good. Like, it felt so good to be able, like, to be in control of, you know, our medical care, our baby coming into this world. It felt good, so good that nobody was telling us like what, you know, what we, what we had to do. But at the same, like at the same time, like coming home without a baby, you know, our baby, our kids are like, where's the baby? Where's the baby? And we're like, we didn't have the baby today. You know, it was hard to like swallow that pill after like after the high of like we just did that came down but you know my husband was really good about like you know god got us we're gonna be okay like you know we'll just we'll go back in the morning and after they leave we'll go back in the morning and you know everything's gonna be okay and in my head I'm just like uh I felt like such a failure like I shouldn't have done that but at the same time, I'm also, you know, trusting God that, you know, we made the right choice. Now we're going to have a baby tomorrow, May 1st, when we want to anyway. And it's just going to be so much, you know, everything's going to be so much better. So I went to sleep, um, woke up that morning. You know, everything was, everything was, everything was good. Everything was regular. I still wasn't having a baby. Um, so we got ready and... We got ready, everybody got ready super early. We got ready, we went to, we were on our way to the hospital, right? We're getting food. Um, as we're getting food, the nurse, actually the midwife herself calls me. And she was like, um, hey, um, what happened yesterday? You know, I saw that you were here and then you weren't and there's no baby. So what happened? Like explain what happened. So I told her, you know, the crew, the first crew in the morning, they were okay with our birthing plan. The second crew was not okay with that. And we weren't okay with that. So we just left. And um, she was like, okay, what's your birthing plan? I told her the same three things that we wanted. My husband to deliver the baby, no epidural, and delayed cord clamping. She said, what? She said, how, how soon can you be here? I said, we're right up the street. We could be there in 10 minutes. She said, all right, come on in. And we, we got it. Like, everything you want, we'll do it. So already we're like, whew, like... 
already is better. It's already it's already a good experience, right? So we came in, um, and everybody's waiting for us. The room is ready. Everything is you know everything is everything is laid out already because we were already there the day before. So we came in. Um, she was like, you know, even though you got your penicillin yesterday, we want to just give you one more round just to make sure. And I'm like, hey, do what you got to do. You know, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. We got all day. Okay. So um, she started my penicillin. This time it wasn't four hours. It was quicker because I already had my first round. So, oh, it's May 1st now, by the way. So we came in. We got our penicillin. Um, she said after the penicillin, she would check me. So she checked me and I was still only like two centimeters now. So two centimeters, she was like, I could break your water now or we could just wait and let stuff happen naturally. I said, ma'am, break my water, break this water. Let's have this baby. So she's breaking my water. And then it's so funny because she she said my water, my water bag, my yeah, she said my water was like a freaking bag of steel. Like it didn't want to break. There was no way it was going to break by itself. My That baby, my baby was in there like she was in there for good. So she broke my water and it hurt. Like she was like tugging and like, it, I don't know. It was, it was crazy. But, um, so she broke my water finally. And, um, we, I sat up, she sat me up in the bed and we just was talking for a little bit. And then like it gushed out finally. So after that, I felt more like I felt better. Like I knew this was going to start happening. Like everything was going to be great. And so again, I have my mom in the room and my husband. I'm only allowed two people at a time, right? So my sister, oh, that's another thing. My sister was on duty April 29th, right? So April 29th, she had to be on her on duty 24 hours. So she couldn't leave just in case the baby came or whatever. She couldn't leave. So it was like everything, I'm telling you everything, like the next day, May 1st, she was off duty. So everything was just aligning so perfectly that it was it was meant to be May 1st. So we was waiting for her to come like to drive from San Diego to where we were, which is like a 30 minute drive, maybe like in the morning on a Sunday. So she drove from the hospital to me and I'm, you know, sending her messages every like everything that happens. Like we just checked in. They just broke my water. Da -da -da -da. Like everything. Right. So. Um, yeah, so they broke my water, the water is gushing out, and now I want to go for a walk. So I'm going for a walk. We maybe did like three, four laps um around the hospital, and my husband's recording the whole thing, it's kind of funny. And so finally she comes while we're on our walk. So now her and my mom, they just start like swapping out, you know, everything that that like as labor progresses. So um yeah, so labor progressed and it took a long time. Um, they gave me, they started my Pitocin after a while. I didn't want to, I didn't want to walk no more because I didn't feel like anything was really happening. So they gave me my Pitocin and, you know, they put Pitocin up, like they start you at like two, I think. And they put it up every like, I don't know, maybe like every hour or so. But I already know me, my pain tolerance is through the roof. So put my joint up like every 30 minutes, put my joint up. So they started putting my thing up. And, um, you know, it started, it started doing this, it started doing its job. It really did. It started doing its job. Um, I think maybe around like seven, maybe six or seven, I really started feeling it. Like it was, it was getting crazy. It was getting crazy around that time. And I wanted to take a nap. Couldn't take a nap. I was like too excited. It was way too bright. It was too early in the day. Like it just wasn't working for me. So I was feeling it. And my sister and my husband, they took naps and everybody was taking a nap. And that's good for them because they're not going through what I'm going through, right? So that's good for them. And I wasn't mad because I was going to need help after anyway. So, so boom, I want to say um, maybe around like, maybe like, you know, my doctor came and checked on me every, maybe every hour. Um, so around like four she was she would let me know i was probably like the my pitocin was probably around like eight or nine maybe eight and she would let me know we i was i would ask her like when y'all gonna check me like it's been a long time now maybe i'm you know i'm almost there and she was like no we'll you'll know and when you know i'll know and we'll we'll know everybody's gonna know when you're ready she's like you're like you sound like you still got more in you 
And I was like, okay, you're right. Like, I've done this two other times. I, I could do this. This is not that bad. So around maybe 5 o'clock, she came in and she was like, you getting there. You starting to get there. I hear you from down the hallway. It's, it's starting to get there. And I'm just like, you can just hear me moaning and like groaning. Like, it's, it's getting crazy down there, right? But it's not hurting yet. Like, it's still, I still don't feel like, like I know it's time to push. And... You know, if I'm being honest with you guys, like I was a little discouraged in myself because every other time that I've had a baby, somebody has told me, you know, it's time to push. And so it's like, all right, like, good, thanks. Like, I, we can go now. Like, it's game time. But this time she's telling me, like, you're going to tell me when it's time. And I'm like, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I could do that because I don't know. I've never had to do that. So you know, I was a little discouraged and not, you know, as um, confident in myself, I guess. But, uh, you know, I just, I put that in the back of my mind because my body will tell me when it's time, right? So I think around 5.15 and I'm being very like, I don't know, I don't know that well because I obviously wasn't looking at the watch, at the clock and it was just, it, everything happened so fast. So I'm going to say maybe around 5.15 I'm si I'm sitting on the ball this whole time, mind you. Like the whole time I'm in, I'm getting my pitocin. I'm sitting on the ball because it just feels good. So, um, sitting on the ball, I'm bouncing on the ball, and I'm like bent over, like over the bed. I'm like this on the ball, like bouncing on the ball and like over the bed. And at five fifteen, I t I kid you not, you guys. I told like, I said nah. I told my husband, I have to push. <laughs> it's time. It's time to push. I gotta push. And he's like, yo, like tell everybody, like, go get the, get the, get the doctor. Tell everybody, go get my, go get Judy, my mom and Kiara, my sister and my mom switched. So my mom came in the room finally and Kiara was in the hallway waiting. And as soon as, like, as soon as everybody came, I stood up from the ball, you guys, I couldn't, there was blood, there was blood on the ball, obviously, because the baby's about to come out and I couldn't even like roll onto the bed. Like I was about to, I was about to push standing up. Like it just hurt so bad. I couldn't even get on the bed. So I stand up from the ball. It just felt like, like everything just came down. Right. So I got up, I'm standing up now. I can't roll on the bed and everybody's in now. And I'm just like, I feel so, I don't know how I felt. Like I felt kind of embarrassed almost like, what if it's not time? You know, like what if, what if I just called everybody in here and it's a false alarm? Like, it was just so many things going through my mind at that time. So, you know, everybody's like, no, don't worry about it. Like, if you're telling us you got to push, you probably got to push. So, finally, I just, like, throw myself on the bed. I roll onto the bed, like, during a, a contraction. Because my contractions are coming, I mean, not during contraction, during, a like, downtime or whatever. My contractions are coming, like, like rapid fire. Like, it's it's not, it's almost, like, not healthy, Right. So they put my Pitocin down a little bit because it's on 10 now and it's too, it's too much. So they put it down a little bit. I get on the bed when I'm, while I'm not having a contraction mad quick and throw my legs up and everything. And they look, the baby's head is already there. <sighs> Thank God. I am so relieved because I'm thinking like, oh my God, I hope this is not a false alarm. I just called everybody in here and I'm not even ready. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm crazy, right? But baby's head is there. They see the hair. Everything is great. Um, I'm lit. So, um, you know, like regular wafer contraction. And I kid you not, three contraction, three pushes later, she's out, bro. Like, it was crazy. It was so crazy. And she was born at 1732. So between like 515-ish and 1732, my baby was out. Yep, and that's that's all. It's everything I got on my notes. And she was born eight pounds and thirteen ounces, which is a little bit of a disappointment because my son was nine pounds and two ounces, and my daughter was eight pounds and three ounces. So I'm not like I'm not tripping because my daughters are eight pounds, so my son is nine pounds. So I'm thinking that's okay. You know, I'm okay with that. Um, and I'm parched. So give me a sec. But 
but overall this was like my favoriteest labor and delivery store you guys and i'm gonna put i'm gonna make another video with the footage of the actual birth because my mom is the goat y'all she set the camera up and everything like we weren't supposed to but my mom is a civilian who are you gonna what's she going like hello so she put it up she recorded the whole thing so stay tuned you guys for the next video i hope you enjoyed this video like comment and subscribe and share this video with somebody that is pregnant or you know is gonna give birth soon or already gave birth and has a similar labor and delivery story i would love to hear it um but until then you guys have a good day and um you feel me have a good day bye